Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. If you are new, my name is Leanne and here on this channel I like to share simple and easy, budget friendly DIYs. Now oftentimes that means a lot of Dollar Tree items which I love, but I'm up for anything that's budget friendly. So if that is Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Hobby Lobby clearance, thrifted finds, it doesn't matter, I'm up for all of it. So today we're going to be doing some Dollar General home decor flips. Each of these are using Dollar General items, but paired with some Dollar Tree stuff as well. And all together, each DIY is under $2, so they're definitely budget friendly. So without anything further, let's get started with the first DIY. All right, so for our first Dollar General DIY, I've got these cute little farm animals. I thought they were really cute and I was excited to actually find all three. Actually, there was two sets of them, um, but they are sold individually, but they're only a dollar each. I did pay full price for these. I get a lot of stuff on clearance at Dollar General, but a dollar is not too bad. And I just used my hair dryer to heat up the sticker to, um, and then scrape that off because some of them were not coming off super easy. And then a little bit of sandpaper to get the rest of the adhesive off. And you don't necessarily have to do that, but I just like the back to be finished. And then I am going to use, well, I had a hard time getting these staples out. I do not want to keep the beaded, the beads, the beads on twine wrapped around their necks. I just didn't love it. So I wanted to take them off. So I'm using a flathead screwdriver to pry up the staples is what ended up working and peeling, uh, pulling those out. And we're going to save those beads and just add them to my stash because they will come in handy at some point. And then I'm just going to use some sandpaper to smooth those out again, just so the back looks pretty nice. It's just like a thick MDF board, but sanding it down kind of smoothed it out nicely. And then I'm just going to take these black stickers. These are from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to put some words on each of them. These stickers are small, which is what I wanted, um, but they are a little bit fragile, so you just kind of have to be a little bit, you know, careful when handling them because they can tear, and there's my hair. And um, whenever I'm placing the stickers down, I just place them down gently and usually just either, like at the bottom. And that way I can adjust them if I need to before pressing them down. And then I wanted to go in with a little bit of white paint just to do a dry brush, just to kind of, I don't know, I wanted to give it a little bit more interest, I guess, than just the plain wood. But I didn't really want to paint the whole thing because I liked that look. And I also wanted to dull down the black sticker. So black stickers, I should say. And so I'm going to go a little bit heavier around the edges and then just across the whole thing as well. And I thought that was a really simple, fun way to switch up these Dollar Tree farm animals. And I love how they came out. They're going to be, going to be cute on some shelves or to your trays or whatever. For this next one, I've got this sign from Christmas from the Dollar Tree. I think I actually picked this up after Christmas. When it was on clearance and so it was only 50 cents but they sell these signs in variety of sizes a variety of shapes and sizes and designs for all the different holidays i think they have some out now for spring and i'm just using my little scraper tool to pull off the gnome and the little ball that was i guess on top of the gnome i need to use my hot glue gun or my oh my goodness my hair dryer to heat up the hot glue a little bit and then we're going to flip it over and i am going to fill in the little holes um, but you don't have to do that if you're going to want to hang the sign, but I'm not going to hang it. I'm just going to use some Velcro command strips. My lightweight spackling from the Dollar Tree has dried out. It's pretty crumbly. So I just mixed in a tiny bit of water, mixed it around with a popsicle stick, and brought it back to life. And it worked pretty good. And then I'm just going to use that to fill in the holes. And I've seen people do this. Various people. I don't remember who the first person was I saw that did this. But put a little bit of tape on the back side. And that way, it just prevents the spackling from going all the way through. So I did that. We are going to cover the back of the sign as well. But we're just going to fill that in, let that fully dry, and then you just sand it off to make it smooth, and then it's good to go. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up, and let me know that you like this video, that you're digging what I'm doing, and that helps out my channel because it lets you two know that people are enjoying my content and they're likely to share it with other people. So now I'm going in with some Waverly chalk paint in the color white. I am trying to, oh my voice is squeaking. My, I am trying to coat the edges, but not super thoroughly because as you can tell I'm kind of just doing, I don't want to say it's not a dry brush, it's just a rough coat because 
that's easier than just going back and distressing it. So I'm gonna let some of the brown MDF board show through just to give it a little bit more of a rustic look. And I'm getting it all over my hands because I'm going quickly across because the MDF board soaks up the paint. So it's really hard to like move it around. Once it hits the MDF board, it starts absorbing it. So you just kind of have to move fast. So I just held it with my hand and was like, I'm gonna just get paint all over my hand and that's okay. And it is okay, it washes off. Once that was dry, I did try to sand it down a little bit, mainly around the edges. Just like I said, wanted to give it a little bit more of a rustic look, although this was totally destroying my sandpaper. I need to get another sanding block from Dollar Tree. Um, my, I had to throw mine out because it was well used. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of roughing that up around the edges. I had forgotten that I had a nail file, which I uh, could have used. But anyways, and I'm using my little vacuum to vacuum up all the dust. Now we're going to flip it over and I'm going to cover the back just so that it's finished. And I'm going to use some of that wood looking paper. I have that from a pack from Hobby Lobby. Now it is a pretty thick like cardstock. So I want to go really, really heavy on the Mod Podge. If it's a thinner paper. You don't want to go too heavy because it might wrinkle up. So um, I'm just going to use two pages, try to line them up and use my brayer. This is from Plaid. Plaid is the company that sells Mod Podge. And once that was all smoothed out and dry, I did a top coat as well. And this is because I was more worried about the top coat on this one because I am going to be using some Velcro command strips. So I wanted a good hard hold on the paper so that if I pulled the sign off, I wouldn't pull the backing out. So you don't necessarily have to Mod Podge the um, back or the top of the paper if you don't want to and you don't have to cover the back if you don't want to but I wanted to and I'm just going to use my little uh, exacto knife I think that is and going to cut off the excess and then we'll go in with the nail file that I remembered I had <laughs> and sanding off the edges um, this is a very very handy um, for this kind of a thing and once the Mod Podge is dry you don't have to worry about ripping it up just make sure you're sanding away not pulling up on the paper now we're going to use a Dollar General item here. This is from Dollar General, obviously, for a dollar. And I really like this leather hanger, but I don't need it for this particular project. So I'm going to take it off. I'll throw it in my stash. You never know when you're going to need it. I didn't worry about pulling the sticker off because it's going to be glued onto the larger sign. Basically, I loved this sign. I thought it was cute. I'm going to put it in our guest bathroom, but I wanted it to be a little bit bigger. And so we're going to layer the two signs. I'm using my acrylic markers. Uh, paint markers from Hippie Crafter. They sent them to me and I love them. I will leave a link for them down in the description box. But I wanted to paint the edge of the sign. Just I thought it would look a little bit more finished. And then I'm also doing a little bit on the edge so that you can also see it from the front. So I hope that makes sense. And I didn't do it smoothly. I just wanted it to be, I don't know, rustic. I don't know how to describe it. Um, and then I'm using some wood glue um, super gel is that what it was called um, and some hot glue to attach this to my sign and this way we have just a little bit of a larger piece and then I'm going to add a bow here just to cover up the hole I could have tried to fill it in but then it wouldn't have looked right so I thought it'd be cute to just cover it with a bow I have those from a pack from Hobby Lobby I think from the fall maybe and that's all there is to it that's it for this sign Love how it came out, thought it was super cute. All right, for this next flip from Dollar General, I have this plant that I picked up on clearance. I picked a bunch of them up last year on like major clearance, which is easy to find. Go to Dollar General's after, the, after a season or a holiday and you can get some really good deals. So I paid, it was less than a dollar. I think I probably paid 70 or 80 cents for this. And I'm going to paint the whole thing with a couple coats of Waverly Chalk Paint in the color white. I'm doing the bottom first so that I can set it down. And I'm using my hair dryer on a cool setting. If you use a warm setting, it just kind of makes it a little bit tackier. And you'll want to let it cool first. And I'm just doing that so that I can get that second coat on so I can be free to set it down. So I thought this plant was cute. But, um, and I didn't hate the design on it, but it just didn't go with anything. And I wanted to do this for like the spring and summer. I think I'm going to probably use this out on my patio is what I'm thinking. So, um, yeah, 
I think I love it because the rocks are attached in there so I don't have to worry about them blowing out or anything like that. So I'm going to do a couple of good coats of the Waverly chalk paint in the color white and, and then I'm also taking a small paintbrush and just doing across the top. It's kind of hard to tell but that's kind of like a beigey color and I just wanted it to be, you know, more finished. If you're new here, I would love it if you would consider hitting that subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. I love sharing easy and budget-friendly DIYs with you. I do a lot of Dollar Tree DIYs, but I also just use anything I can find that I can get a good deal on. And I like to do just, yeah, home decor on a budget. All right, so once it is all finished and dry, I pull out these um, rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. I thought they would be really pretty for like spring and summer and I did not have a whole all, enough of them the whole sheet would not just wrap around the whole thing and I only had one sheet of them so I'm gonna end up cutting it up into little pieces and putting it all over these transfer super well so I'm just using my fingernail to scrape them on um, because parts of this were curved I had to just do a portion of it at a time um, so that it would you know lay flat and I just cut out little bits and pieces and did them all over in random designs, trying to make it look purposefully random so that it didn't look like I was trying to stretch the rub-ons because I didn't have enough for the whole thing. So um, yeah, one, rub, one sheet really worked well. I could have even cut up some of those bigger pieces into smaller sections, and I think that would have been a little bit better. But in the end, I'm happy with how it came out, and I just like this fun little floral pattern. And then I'm going to go in with some clear wax from Waverly to seal this in. You could also use some Mod Podge. I will probably, I'm not too worried about it, like our patio is screened in. Um, so most of the elements it'll be fine from, but it gets seriously dusty and pollen-y. Like right now I'm not putting anything out there because it is covered in yellow pollen. Um, but I wanted it to be easy to wipe down. So I'm just using a stencil brush to get on the wax and then buffing it out with a paper towel and that is it I love how this one came out as well I hope that you enjoyed these if you did once again don't forget to give it a thumbs up let me know which one was your favorite down in the comments and I will see you in my next video bye guys